My name is Sarah Packer, and I am the Art Tours and Travel Manager for Art Encounter in Evanston. Art Encounter is a 40-year-old arts educational organization. And today I would like to introduce you to Evanston gallerist Rose Cannon, who is the owner of Cannon Fine Art, and she represents artists of color. Good afternoon, Rose. I'm so delighted that you're here with us today. Hi. Good to see you, Sarah. So you've recently returned into the arts world. Tell us a little bit about your lifelong interest in the arts. Well, my grandmother used to sit me down to the table as a way of distracting me from running behind my brothers. And she would always put a piece of paper in front of me. And she basically started showing me how to do stick stick drawings and things like that. And I, I progressed. I was maybe at about the age of four or five. I remember, I remember starting then. Um, and from that point on, I just, whenever I couldn't go play outside, I would draw. And uh, I did that all the way through, um, I took art classes all the way through fourth year of university. Tell us, um, so when did you start collecting art and, and what led you to want to become a gallerist? I, I always wanted to take an entrepreneurial course. And, and so I decided to take the course. So when it came my time in the entrepreneurial class, to decide to tell them what business I was going to do. And I told them that I was now creating art and I, I wanted to see if I could sell it and become a gallerist. So that was around April of 2019 that I began, that I actually sat down. I cornered, I cornered Fran Joy. And I said, Fran, I, I want to, I want to do an art gallery, you know, like in the way that Michael Phillips did his art gallery more than 15 or 20 years ago here right. in Evanston. And I knew she had worked for him. So I said, show me how to do it. <laughs> and so um, the first guy that I bought was David Niari, the first artist. How do you choose your artist? You, you chose David. What attracts you to certain artists and their, their work? Honestly, it's a, a spiritual, um, I, I'm very spiritual oriented and I believe in the chakra system uh, of our bodies. And when I look at an artist's work, I tune into what I'm feeling in the different levels of my chakras. And I will usually sit with a piece of work or stand and watch it or come back around to it. And I'm always feeling what am I feeling when I'm looking at this? It is something in this piece that is drawing me to stand and look at it and to identify all the parts of it? And that usually will be um, it's something that tells me this might be something that I want to buy. One thing is that you do focus on artists of color. You featured them. You've had shows both um, at the Evanston Art Center, at 1100 Florence. You recently have had one at uh, Creative Coworking in Evanston as well. And you call your, you call your show Soul Works. Well, very, very, very frankly, um, I'm centering artists of color, uh, Black, Indigenous, people of color artists, um, because they have been pretty much kept aside in our culture. And, and that, I remember when I first discussed wanting to do that, I was with a group of white artists and I got a lot of pushback. And this was before all the intense social justice work had started to, this must've been about a year and a half ago. And it was before George Floyd and before all of, all of the stuff that happened. And I got pushback from the white artists. So I, so I backed away for a while and thought about it, maybe, maybe I'm not going to be able to sell my art if I, if I center only black artists, because I got, I got, I got some serious pushback from the white art. Wow. So there was really an education that needed to happen. I, I did. And it, it kind of, because I want to attract all, all sectors of, of the public to buy my art, I, I didn't want to alienate one group. And I, had to work through that emotionally and and have worked through that <laughs> and it's taken about a year or so let's look at some of this work i mean the the beauty is in the work and in the artists that you choose 
Well, we are super excited about David Niari, a young artist. Does where where does David live? Uh, David lives um, uh, in Rogers Park right now. So he's our neighbor. He, right, right, our neighbor. That's just like being in Evanston. But David came to me through a friend, and she she gave me his number, and we contacted, and I said, Fran, will you come with me? I'm going to see my very first artist. I'm going to meet him. And uh, Fran came with me, and and we met um, we met Niari at Einstein's Bagels in Evanston. And he sat down, and he was talking to us, and he was telling us what kind of art he did. And I said, I said, gosh, I would like to see some of this in 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 person. He said, oh, I've got one in the car. I said, oh, God, please bring it in. <laughs> please bring it in. And it was his Inglewood that he brought in. And and my hair, although it stands on in naturally now, it stood up another two inches when I said, oh, my God. And I said, you know, it, it's painted in the, the, the fashion of Guernica. And I could identify all those things, but then it it's in brown and it's labeled Inglewood. And I personally know Inglewood, a uh, part of Chicago. And I said, oh, my God. God, David, this is phenomenal. Will you show it with me? And he said, absolutely. And the beautiful portrait called A Season. It's a beautiful picture. It, it, it elicits a lot of emotion. I'm not sure if I could have that one hanging in my home. <laughs> you know, especially through this pandemic and we're all sad and weepy and, 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 and moaning and stuff. But it's a beautiful picture to see. You know, it, it's it's stunning, and just that he has different styles. His technique changes, but he's so equally skilled. And I know you also collaborate, as you mentioned, with Fran Joy, who people in Evanston, I'm sure, are familiar with. There's the beautiful painting of Stacey Abrams. Yes, that's her very recent one, and uh, we're all in love with that. It's it's in a it's in a really a luscious blue, and so when you look at it, it just uh, it uh, it sparkles actually. I want to talk about Fran's work a little bit, even though it does hit you in the gut, it doesn't assault you, and and that and the beauty of it, the color of it. Um, is something that you can live with if you hang on your walls and stuff. Fran, Fran has been around a long time and she's very established and I think people feel safe with, with her art. I also love the work of Michelle Delgado. It's a little mysterious. Can you tell us a little bit about Michelle and showing his work? He's from Senegalese. I think he got here like maybe 2008 or something like that. Um, he has a studio here in Chicago. Well, Michelle calls himself a visionary artist who works in mixed media. And when I first walked into his studio, it was the kind of mesmerizing that I, that the visceral, uh, emotional and spiritual feeling that I just, you know, I was just like, I was just going from one to one to one. But it's that kind of work that, that captures you and grabs you. Um, there's an emotional feeling to it. There's also William Quimenopo. I love this. This one sells very readily in my gallery. And uh, people have asked me, uh, patrons have asked me, are these photos I'm looking at? And I'll say, no. Those are those are prints of watercolors that he does, and so and some of some of the people can't even believe that they are that they are uh, watercolor prints. And Javoid is he's local, is that correct? Yes, Javoid is an, an Evanston resident, a, a long long time Evanston resident, and and he and his wife are are very active in 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 the political social scene here in Evanston, and his art always amazed me. He works in the style, it's a folk art style, reminiscent of the Grandma Moses style, or primitive style. Um, the most interesting thing to me about his work is the color. Once again, I love color, and that's all that I can tell you, and, and maybe that's my, 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 my Afro background, but it's, it's got to be colorful. 
Um, it's got to be striking. And all of his, all of his stuff is just very, very colorful. And he, he Joyd, Joyd also does carvings of, of little individual people. My question would be, you know, what is your hope for, by introducing these black artists into our community, into Evanston, what is your hope that it will bring to um, Evanston and beyond? Just unity of our cultures. I mean, that's a, a big bottom line here. Um, you know, a lot of our a lot of our black artists have been shut out. That's what I'm interested in. I'm, I'm interested in bringing unity to all of our culture, and um, I'm feeling by exposing this culture in Evanston, which has not always been accepting. Of, of of black people and and I know because I'm a I'm a, I'm what they call a, a a legacy reparationist here. I'm my family's been here since forever, and um, we never went to any of the art galleries here. We never felt welcome. I would like for my people to be able to walk in the Evanston Art Center or walk into any gallery that I own or that any of my white colleagues would own and feel accepted and welcomed. Um, and that's really what I'm hoping. It's, it's really very simple. Um, I would like to bridge the gap that, uh, that, that our cultures have had between us. And, and I work, I'm working very diligently in the social justice area here in Evanston too, uh, being involved in the reparations movement and being uh, and involved in uh, racial, social, racial social talks with the YWCA and also with my church, Second Baptist Church. I'm, we're, we're facilitators in these race talks uh, right now um, between two churches. Um, and also at the YWCA. So I feel the need to expose my artists, to let them make some money, um, to, to let them feel welcome in all areas of, of our society. You know, I'm so glad that you are bringing the beautiful work of these artists that you represent to us in Evanston, and I know that as you evolve as a gallerist, uh, you will be adding more and more artists and expanding your shows when we get out of the pandemic. Uh, you are just truly a, a gem and a joy to get to know. Thank you so much, <laughs> Rose, for joining us today. It has been such a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you for uh, thank you for your center for inviting me to this interview. Just thanks a lot for the opportunity. Mm -hmm.